I'm Daryl Richardson, and welcome to Behind the Stars, the untold stories of Black industry dancers. I'm still in the 80s covering this remarkable show. 11 nominations, winner of Best Choreography. Let's have a sneak peek at this Tony Award winning performance. not only performed in black and blue, but he has 12 
Broadway shows under his belt. Let's welcome our next Black industry dancer. My name is Eugene Fleming. Um, I was blessed to work on Broadway from uh, 1979 up until probably 2008 or nine. Had the pleasure of doing a number of Broadway shows. My first Broadway show was a chorus line. I got a chorus line at 18 years old, right out of North Carolina School of the Arts. I was a senior in high school. I graduated high school and went to New York to uh, study at the School of American Ballet. Um, and I went back to start college. My first week of college, I got a call from a chorus line, the Broadway show. My parents came down and put me in college the first week. And then at the end of that week, they came back and put me on a flight to New York City. And uh, I went to New York and I joined a national company of a chorus line. I had the pleasure of doing chorus line for about two years. It took me to another show called Sophisticated Ladies. I did Sophisticated Ladies at 20. Uh, the National Company with Gregory Hines, Paula Kelly, and a number of Phyllis Hyman and a number of fabulous, talented performers, Mr. Hinton Battle and Greg Burge. Um, I was, I got a chance to study dance from some of the best guys. Uh, I understudied Greg Burge and I understudied Hinton. And then that took me to understudying Gregory Hines. From that show, I went to Rome and did a television show for a couple of months. And a friend of mine, Mr. Gary Q. Lewis. And from there... I, I came back to New York and I was all for a little bit. And then I joined a show called The Tap Dance Kid. I was the understudy to uh, Mr. Hinton Battle. And then I replaced him on Broadway. And that was like 84, 85. I toured it, took The Tap Dance Kid all over the United States with an actor that's really big now, Mr. Dulé Hill. And I had another tap dancer called Savion Glover, one of the best dancers ever, Played my both played my kids and the Tap Dance Kid. Tap Dance Kid took me to a, to a show that was really, really uh, a piece of art called Black and Blue, okay? Black and Blue, we did a workshop of in, in 1988, 87, 88. And um, the directors, Claudia Segovio and Hector Arzuli, they were from Paris. They came in and they wanted to make a, a Parisian type review. They looked at some of the best performers on Broadway. And uh, luckily, I had a chance to audition for these guys. Now, the choreographers, mind you, were some of the best ever. Mr. Charlie Atkins, uh, Mr. Henry Latang, Mr. Frankie Manning, and Mr. Fayard Nicholas. All I can tell you is go online and type in their names and, and get a history lesson. They paved the way for us to be able to do what we're doing. And in, and in the show Black and Blue, they covered all types of dance. We had tap. Uh, we had uh, swing dancing. Frankie Manning did the swing stuff. Uh, Fayard Nicholas put some tap numbers on two or three of us. Fayard was a part of the Nicholas Brothers, Harold Nicholas and Fayard, nominal tap duo. And uh, they put together a number or two that, that I had the, the pleasure of doing. When I think about Black and Blue, it was a piece of theater that you will never probably see again. They, they hired some of the best dancers in the city, the, the women were, were very special. Uh, we had singers, Miss Ruth Brown, Miss Carrie Smith. These women were class act ladies. We got a chance to go to a place in theater every night that, that was just unbelievably touching. I was the only male that had a chance to sing in this show. Uh, I sang a song called I Can't Give You Anything to, But Love to uh, Miss Angela Hall. And the number started off as this long tap number with all the girls and all the guys. And then it turned into this soft uh, little duet between myself and Angela Hall. And then it ended in this big, long number with, with everybody coming back in. There's so much, there was so much beauty in this show. I mean, the costumes were unbelievable. One performer, kind. she did a number, man. She wore this beautiful white outfit that if you can find the playbill, look it up, you will be totally touched by all parts of this show. Um, the show ran for almost a year and a half, and I think I did it the, the full run on Broadway. It was just a pleasure to be a part of. Also, I've been blessed to, to pass on the theater life that I've had. I have a daughter that... Uh, she does TV. She does everything. But right now she's on Broadway in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And my son is dancing. Uh, 
He's 10 years old and he's been dancing for, for almost five years. <laughs> Go figure. And uh, so I, you know, the blessings that, that, that we were passed down to us from all of those mentors from black and blue, uh, it's just unfathomable. So I'm grateful to still be present and accounted for. And I'm grateful to you, Daryl, for doing the work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Eugene mentioned a chorus line, sophisticated ladies, tap dance kid, and black and blue. But I want to highlight the additional show that Eugene Fleming appeared in on Broadway. The High Rollers, Swinging on a Star, Street Corner Symphony, Fosse, Kiss Me Kate, One More Time, The Look of Love, Never Gonna Dance, and Billy Elliot. I also found this fabulous shot of Eugene from Song and Dance. Bravo, Eugene. Stay tuned for more untold stories from our Black industry dancer.